With so many low-cost streaming services now available, have you ever wondered, why do people still buy DVDs? Well, three years ago when I first started selling on eBay, it didn't take me long to realise that these things were selling faster than some of the other categories I was trying to sell. So with this information, I did what anyone else would do. I bought more of them. And three years later, I've now sold close to $80,000 worth of DVDs. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through my simple four-step sales process for generating fast online DVD sales, guaranteed to have you selling hundreds of DVDs on eBay, even as a beginner. We've also got five things that I wish I knew before I started selling on eBay that will absolutely fast-track your sales results. So stick around for that. Before we get started though, I wanted to answer that big question, why do people still buy DVDs? The first thing would be retail stores are slowly phasing out of the category. You can't go into these brick and mortar stores and pick up DVDs like you used to. And that ultimately just increases the value on secondhand marketplaces like eBay. I would consider the DVD like the modern day vinyl record. They're now super popular, but they phased out when the CDs came around back in the late 80s. I think DVDs are the next line in the chain. So it's certainly something over this next little window to be paying attention to. I've seen it happen over the last three years and I think there's going to be certainly some more years to come of popularity. People also want a physical copy of their favourite TV show or their favourite movie. Yes, there's streaming services available, but they don't have that physical copy with that streaming service. So to be able to put it into their bookcase or put it into their TV cabinet and have that physical copy from back in the 90s or 2000s, whenever it first came out, it holds sentimental value. And I think that inherently people are also collectors. eBay is a collector's marketplace and there's no wonder that these things are being picked up because people are trying to collect and complete entire sets of their favourite TV shows or movies. So now that we know that they sell and reasons why they sell, what's the first step in the process? Well, it's finding them. How do we source these DVDs and get them at the right price to be able to go and put them online and to make some overall profit? Fortunately, they're one of the easiest items to source because literally everybody has DVDs from back in the day. So I use all the standard fundamental processes of sourcing inventory, garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, pawn shops, Facebook marketplace. But the big one, the big one that I have got for you if you're just starting out, source items through friends and family because you're often going to be able to pick them up from people for free because people don't credit DVDs to be worth anything and little do they know that they're actually worth significant value on eBay and they'd be more than happy to help you out with your eBay journey by giving you some free DVDs or at least getting them at the price that you will want to be buying them for which we're about to touch on. So we know these things are in abundance, but how do we know which ones sell best? Well, that's the next link in the chain, what to source. And there's a few things that I've got for you here that are really gonna save you quite a bit of time. And the first one is that you should be focusing on TV shows, not movies. Now, if I gave you an, a full table of DVDs and I said, go ahead and scan them up and put in a pile of the best ones, they will have a complete series written on them or they'll have a season allocation of a certain TV show. It's gonna be the shows, not the movies, that work best so if you're just starting out go ahead and focus on the TV shows only and you're going to be saving yourself a whole heap of time now I get a lot of questions around DVDs when it comes to condition of disc people watch my videos and they say Matt I noticed that there was a couple of scratches on that disc I'm really surprised that you went ahead and picked it up that DVD is going to go on to play back fine my generalized message around that is if there's no scratch there's no worries but I am very lenient on that rule because if there are light scratches with a bit of a clean that thing will still play back back. Um, so don't really get too stressed around it. I would literally just go on your own best judgment. If you open it up and you see super deep scratches in the disc, it's absolutely not going to play back. Uh, but if there's only some light surface scratches, I really wouldn't stress it. I would go ahead with it. At the end of the day, you're buying these for a pretty cheap price to begin with. So you're going to be refunding a difference of a couple of dollars at the end of the day if you have to give a return. My return rates are incredibly small. I just don't get returns in the DVD category because generally they always play playback. Now, when it comes to price points, what do you buy these things for? I would say that you should be aiming for a $1 to $2 purchase price, and then you should be comping it up to hopefully have it sell for $15 or more. They are the real numbers that you need to work with. You're getting them cheap, and then you're only dealing with the ones that are $15 plus. If they comp up for 10 bucks and you're buying them for a dollar, just don't bother. The profit at the end of the day is going to be too small for you to bother to 
put in all of the time, effort and energy to list it up and ship it off. If you do find a really good DVD that is five or $6 and you're a bit unsure because it's a little bit expensive, I would be using the eProfit app. We're gonna go onto eBay, we're gonna see that it sells for more than $15, but we're buying it for five or $6 and that's a bit expensive. The eProfit app will give you the overall return, the overall profit after fees, postage, cost of goods is completely removed. It's not a sponsored post at all talking about the eProfit app. It's just an app that I personally use every single day in my eBay store and it is a free download as well. So that will give you a really good clear indication of how much profit you can expect to get and you can use your own best judgment to determine whether or not that's something you should go ahead with. All right, now I've just got back from my local thrift store and I was able to come across this, which is eight seasons of the TV show, Foils War. Now it was a dollar a piece, I paid $8 for this and the comps on eBay are quite significant. Certainly enough for me to know that a dollar a piece for $8, this was definitely gonna be worthwhile. In the rest of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to list it up and then I'm gonna show you how to ship it off as well as all the other different shipping alternatives as well. So we'll dive into the listings for this and the first thing that we need to consider is how to take our photos. All right, so if we have a look at these photos, firstly, eBay really likes you to have at least six or more photos for your listing. And I always do this flatbed shot first. I think it's a really good representation of everything that we're trying to sell here. It clearly shows the buyer what we have available. Now, there is eight seasons of this show. There's just seven different DVDs. One of them has two seasons in it. Uh, from there, I flip it over for the second photo. Now, this has all of the relevant information that the buyer's gonna need. It shows region number, it shows subtitles, pretty much any of the questions that you're potentially gonna get from a buyer is able to be answered on the back of that. So that is a crucial second photo uh, to be taking. From there, I open up one of the DVDs and I just show the fact that this isn't a cheap barley burnt copy that isn't genuine. It is a real DVD, proper genuine make, and that is an easy representation of that. I should have actually spun this photo to show it all down in one line, Foils War. If that was just reading top to bottom, that would have been a lot nicer. Um, but you just wanna show a, a clear shot of the disc only. And then the most crucial shot of your entire photo run is to flip the actual disc over and you really wanna show the most crucial part of the disc uh, to show off any scratches or any markings that might need to be looked at. Um, that is the most important one right there. And then I'll always finish a multi-DVD set uh, with the tower shot, as you can see here. We've got seven DVDs in a tower uh, playing off the first shot. Um, it's a nice little closing shot. So there are the six photos that I always do. When it comes to title, which is the next really important thing with your listing, um, you really need to be really conscious of front-ending your title. Don't use words that don't relate to the actual show itself. Just actually put the title of the show uh, first. So as you can see as an example here, Foils War, and then I've said the complete series one to eight, and I've actually stipulated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if anyone's searching for Foils War and a particular season, they're gonna get literally everything and there's every chance of being picked up uh, with that search. It's ultimately a search tool. The title is a search tool for buyers. So if you're putting things like free postage or rare or you know an emoji, sometimes people use emojis in titles at the front, those keywords right at the very front are so crucial for your listing to be found. So you wanna give them, you just wanna give the buyer exactly what you've got right up front. Um, always use the keyword DVD in your title, obviously. Uh, region is as well is really important. If you're unfamiliar with regions and what regions play where, um, just do some Google research on that. But region four in Australia is playback for us. And then I've got a horrible habit of just saying free postage to round out my characters. You get 80 characters in a title on eBay. Try and use all 80 characters. A way around that for me is just to whack on free postage at the end. $65 is the price that it comped up for on eBay when I did my comp research. I searched Foils War Complete Series. I saw over the last 90 days all of the different average sale prices and I priced it accordingly at $65. Now to get some easy quick wins, you could go ahead and price your item up for something that sort of sits in the below quarter. So maybe the first quarter of pricing towards the bottom and as you become more of an experienced seller, get a few sales under your belt, um, you can price up a little bit higher. I generally play in the top quadrant of pricing um, and it's all determined around the condition of what you actually are trying to sell as well that will determine where that pricing scale sits. It's just something that you'll learn and adapt to over time, but that's a little representation of how I do that. Uh, when it comes to item specifics, 
Uh, I just try and put in all of the recommended item specifics. Everything else I don't worry about. So there's a bit of an example here. We won't go into it in any great detail today, but uh, a lot of the key terms that are in the item specifics have been referenced uh, in this listing. So it is a pretty full, pretty compact listing um, from an item specific perspective. I don't really put too much information in the description and really after that, it's just set up and ready to go. So probably the only other thing that I would do to that listing is just add a 3% worth of promoted listings to just give a few more impressions to that listing and potentially get it found and sold a little bit quicker. We're gonna dive into the postage now because it's the number one question I get when it comes to selling on eBay. How do I do the posts? I wanna get it done correctly. Um, it's an easy, easy process, guys. I'm gonna put the fears to bed right now and I'm gonna show you every single scenario of a DVD sale. The first one is the smallest sale that you're gonna get a single DVD, how to ship off a single DVD. You've got two different options. Firstly, the C5 envelope. This is the C5 Gold Craft envelope. You buy these in packs of 50 for $8.50. So every single one of these costs you 17 cents. I actually just go ahead and I'll put that straight into the envelope and send it off without bubble wrap. Sometimes you can put bubble wrap into the actual DVD itself just to protect it a little bit, definitely recommend it. Um, but it will add a little bit more weight. And with these untracked envelopes, it's all weight dependent. Um, so I've got these stamps here and you're gonna to need to use two stamps if it's up to 125 grams. And you're gonna to have to add an extra stamp, three stamps, if it goes to 250 grams. So generally, for TV show seasons with a four disc set, as you can see there, that falls between 125 and 250, and it's gonna get the three stamp treatment, and it's gonna cost about $3.60, $3.75 to send off, which isn't too bad if it's selling for $15 or more. Um, so that's the first step. The other one as well is that you can send it via tracked postage. I use these. This one is the medium tracked envelope. Now the medium tracked, um, you can buy packs of 10 of these for five, uh, sorry, for $53.60. So it works out to about $5.35 per send. Um, now I, I very much just like the untracked envelope, I will just go ahead Maybe put a bit of bubble wrap in there and I'll just whack it into there. This one isn't so tight on weight discrepancy. Um, you've got up to 500 grams. So you've got a lot more weight allocation in the tracked postage and you also get a tracking number for the buyer. So for what, $5.30 versus $3.70, um, you know, I would say if it was anything under $15 worth of a DVD sale price, um, I would go with this. And then if it was anything over $15 for the sake of $1.70, I would just send it in a tracked envelope. Um, so that's the way that I would do a single. Um, now, if it's a two DVD, let me grab that envelope. All right, so say we sold Foils War one and two. There is an opportunity to send it in a large tracked envelope. So just a bigger version of the medium. And you just go ahead and you put them in like that. That's how they sit in the envelope. And again, you could put some bubble wrap into that, but I don't put any bubble wrap around the DVDs. I just send them off as is. And trust me, guys, I have never had an issue. Now these uh, these large envelopes, they sell in packets of 10 for $65.30. So $5.30 for one of those, $6.50 for one of these. So about an extra $1.20 to go up a size, but you get to put two DVDs in it. So that's the only time I ever use that. If it, It's only if I ever sell two DVDs. Three to five DVDs. That is the maximum right there. We've got five DVDs. That will go into a small flat rate satchel. I put them into the flat rate satchels and I always use bubble wrap. Now the price points for that, it's $10.90 roughly speaking uh, to send a DVD bundle of three to five. It's, it's just because it's, it fits well in that. Uh, as soon as you go over a bundle of five and you go between six to eight DVDs, I actually go ahead and I upgrade and I put it into a medium satchel. And those medium satchels are gonna cost you about $14.80 to send off. You can pre-purchase these flat rate satchels from Australia Post. I think they cost about 15 cents each, similar to the untracked envelope. Um, and then your overall price is gonna be either $10.90 or $14.80, depending on the size of the bundle. So the next level up is when we sell nine or more big season sets of DVDs. Rather than putting it into a large satchel, I just go ahead and I put them into a box. And this is just a, a standard cardboard box that just fits the item perfectly. This one here, I'm actually about to ship off. It's got Seinfeld, uh, the complete series, and I've just laid it down into the box. Um, this is all based on weight and measurements of the actual box as well. That determines the, the, the overall expense. And I would say your boxes, 
are generally going to be around $15 to $20. Sometimes you can get them to be a little bit less, um, but I would always sort of account for around that $15 worth of a postage price if you're putting big bundles into a box. And when they're that big, there's so many ways that they could get mixed up and loose and, and bounced around. So I think it's always better to compact them into a box. And I'll always put butcher's paper and bubble wrap. So I'll wrap the bubble wrap, put the butcher's paper in to secure the box and then you're good to go for a $15 uh, price. Now, the other one is international postage. Now, international postage is all down to the weight of the item. Australia Post has a complete breakdown of price points to send internationally, and I do recommend you guys go and check that out. Just have a search to see how much these uh, items do go on to sell for um, from a postage standpoint around the world. But a small satchel is what I'll put um, anything from one to five DVDs. So if it's a single DVD, I'm still gonna put it into one of these small flat rate satchels with some bubble wrap and I'll send it off that way. Um, and then as soon as you go from six to eight, I'm just gonna go and put it into a box. So I'm basically not gonna use the medium satchel. I'm just gonna put bundles of six to eight into one of these and then I'll put an international label on it and send it off. So that is how I do my internationals. My internationals for these sort of smaller variations are around the $15 to $20 price point. And then when I put it into a box, it get, generally gets anywhere between $25 to $40 for international shipping. I usually don't pay more than 40 bucks um, to send around the world. So that's the process of how you go about finding these DVDs, listing them, and then shipping them off once they go on to sell. What I've got for you now is very, very interesting information. This is all the nuances, all the little nitty gritty bits and pieces that I've picked up along the way that I wanna give you my five best of in this video. The first one is that all the key information to let you know whether or not it might comp up for some value actually just lies on the front and the back of the DVD. Some telltale signs for me on a DVD like Foil's War would be the fact that first of all, it says series eight. That would initially just get me very interested. The other one as well is I know that multiple disc sets always generally go for a little bit more money. So the fact that that says three discs piques my interest. The other one as well, I know that Acorn Media as a media production company is a pretty good company. I've always had really good results when I found Acorn Media. I do really well with Umbrella Media in the horror category, and I do really well in general with BBC as well. So that's three different companies or production agencies um, that I know scan up for some decent money, generally speaking. The next one is there is a secret category in children's DVDs. Don't neglect the children's section, especially in thrift stores. They often get pushed to the side, they don't get looked at. My, I will say one caveat to that would be that they are often scratched and really scratched, so much so that you actually can't go ahead and purchase them. So that would be the only thing to worry about there, but uh, children's and also the horror category as well, I really should say the horror section um, has pulled up some absolute bangers on rare titles. So that's another one. Um, also with this, when I was saying before, this is the third topic as well, um, the later the season generally means more value on eBay. If this was season one as a single copy, it might be worth $10. But if it was season 11, and this was an 11 disc or an 11 series set, uh, it might be worth $15 to $20. And that really reflects across all different TV shows in the DVD niche. So if you are out there finding single copy DVDs, you're gonna be in a better position if it's a season 20 or a season 25, because people are out there trying to complete their collections. So that's a really, really good little one um, for you to be aware of. Not all seasons are treated equally. Find the higher season, you'll find a higher dollar. The next one, out of print. It's called OOP. You see it all the time in DVD listings. So when you're doing your research, you're doing your comp checks, you can see on the title of some of them, it might say rare OOP. And what that means is rare out of print. So this DVD, if it was an out of print, would not have been made anymore. Production would have completely stopped on it. And collectors out there really need to get their hands on out of print copies and they pay a whole lot more money for it. So if you see out of print, you can know that it's rare and you can price it up and you'll get a good number for it. And then the last one that I've got for you here is um, when you're looking up DVDs to find out that say the comp for this one here, Foils War, if you were to barcode scan, which is the most common process, is to just get your phone out, you do it in really quick time, bang, 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 you just scan the barcode to work out what the price is actually worth for this DVD. That won't bring up every single comp. You can find every single comp by typing in Foils War Season 8. And that will give you everything of Foils War Season 8, whether it was barcode scanned initially or whether it didn't have a barcode scan because the actual person listing the DVD initially 
would have had to put in that UPC number for it to actually register when you scan your barcode to try and work out comps. So I like to go ahead and just type it in Foils War Series 8 and I get a full allotment of comps so I can work out exactly how much that DVD is worth. So that's everything. But I will say that it is completely useless information if you can't find the right DVDs to go on to sell. Luckily, I've made a video around the 10 most expensive DVDs for you to find out there to really get your DVD business off and running. 